the first video in this series was all about uh, creating a proper power system and doing some thinking before we started to build the boat. In the second video, we looked at how to prepare the pixel before we build it in. And in this, the last video before we start to actually build our boat, we are going to have a look at some of the other components needed for our build. So uh, let's shortly revisit our Pixhawk. Um, I've added some peripherals. First here in, in, in the front, I've added an external USB contact. And uh, the purpose is to be able to tuck away my um, Pixhawk in a safe place. And then add this using Velcro on the side of the boat just close to the battery opening and my boat is going to be glued so I it's not that easy to come to the pixel if you want to have it uh, protected as well so uh, this is then added this way that uh, the USB is put into the USB uh, contact and then the I2C goes in here in this spreader I moved the compass to the spreader as well and then the third um, cable is then put in here and into the i2c contact on the on the um, pixel and to show it that it works we can just apply some power here let me just plug it in and you see you have both some lighting and and than the USB contact here. So that's nice. I'm gonna plug it out again. So now after this, we don't need this USB contact either. So the second peripheral I have added is the power module. It's plugged into the power contact here. And in addition, from the receiver of the t I've connected the serial cable. It goes around here and then into the telemetry one port. And in addition, as I said in the, the first video, I've added a UDP adapter here. It's bought from AliExpress, not a big deal. It goes into telemetry two. And if you remember in the second video, we changed the um, serial one protocol for the telemetry one port. So if this is going to work with CarPilot Pro, we need to change the, tele, uh, the serial two protocol to one as well for the telemetry two port. I'm gonna test later that it actually works. Uh, not gonna put in anything into the boat that doesn't work. So uh, we'll test it later. Most of the cabling system I actually bought pre-made. So uh, we have two long wires here with DINs. They will then plug into the batteries, one on each side. Then we're gonna have power out to the electronic speed controller. I already swapped uh, the connector on one side. I'm gonna do the same for the other. And then we have the relay here. It comes with a 30 amp, uh, Fuse ready installed. It's going to be sufficient, I think. And I have an illuminated on off switch, which I'm going to place in the upper hull. Uh, the, for the lights, I have, uh, think I'm going to use a GT power switch. Um, you just connect it to the Pixhawk using the servo uh, plug. And then it has an uh, input side and an output side. So we're gonna cable so that the 12.6 volts go straight out to the lights. But I control it using the Pixhawk. So that's the switch. 
Uh, I've got a couple of these. These are the backlights. These are extremely bright. So I'm going to see my both uh, far, far, far away. For the front, uh, the Hulk came with uh, a couple of um, yeah, ready uh, parts to glue into the upper hull. So you get a, a light. And then I got some kit here for 12 volts. Uh, it's really important that the LEDs doesn't get too much power because then they'll burn and then you have a big job to repair your boat. So obviously I'm going to test that and make sure it works up front. If it doesn't work, I can always uh, do some mathematics. And I have a set here with some additional LEDs and a big box of resistors. So you just need to pick the right resistor so it lights good, but not so good that it burns the LED. And for the um, bay tray, I'm going to use a push rod system with a servo. So um, I'm going to bend this uh, end in 90 degrees. And I'm going to glue a bit of plastic through the hull. And this will then move really easily through this plastic. So obviously the servo will then go this way and draw the push rod out and then the uh, bait tray will uh, or the plate below the bait tray will then fall down and when it moves in the other direction uh, then it will close and I'm going to use uh, one of the sticks channel 4 for me personally I enjoy to have channel 4 on the left stick so when I <coughs> use my remote I can then open the bait tray like this and when I release it it goes back again Next thing I want to show is then uh, the motor system. Uh, to the left here we have the quick run uh, electronic speed controller connected with three cables to the motor. I will use a 3D printed um, motor holder. Uh, here we have a decoupler and then we have the shank and then the propeller. A couple of uh, things worth mentioning. Um, First of all, uh, this is then the quick run. It's programmable. It comes with a forward parking reverse, and it also comes with a, a with a low voltage cutoff. So we're going to have to program this uh, so it uh, uh, doesn't make problems for us. It also comes with a connector that I'm not very familiar with, so I already swapped one on one of the motors for a Dean's plug. Then the motor, as I said, it's so sweet and tiny. It weighs in at 57 grams and the weight is really important. There's one thing here to note as well. If we turn the motor around, you will see, probably not, but anyway, it is run all over. So we're going to use a Dremel and flatten one side of it. And the reason is that the decoupler needs to have a proper way to fix this set screw on the flat part of this axle. And the same also goes for the, for the shank. It's also round all over. And that simply does not work. It's an accident waiting to happen. Suddenly the motor spins and the propeller doesn't turn. So we need to flatten that as well. So the set screw will also bite properly on the flat part here. And last but not least, you're gonna have two motors and the propellers needs to be mirrored. They shouldn't be the same type so they should rotate in different directions and be mirrored. As echo sounder, 
I have uh, already modified a Raymarine Pro 5 with an antenna socket coming out on the side. Uh, somehow I need to make room for this inside one of the uh, parts of, of, of the boat. And in addition, I have this then the, the regular uh, transducer. It's going to be a problem, so most likely I need to cut a hole in the bottom of the boat and place it uh, so it's actually outside. And this cable, this is far, far, far too long to be useful. It adds a lot of weight and takes a lot of room, so I need to shorten that cable as well. And then I have a really standard wireless uh, Wi-Fi booster. The antenna is okay. It comes with uh, one cable. I need to make some cables as well so that this will then be connected to the Raymer in here. And then another cable coming up to the upper hull so I can mount the antenna outside. Next up is the bait thrower. Inside the boat, I will mount this uh, Skywalker uh, speed controller and attach some wires then in the upper hole with this socket. It cuts three liters. So this will then be in the upper hole with some wires coming down. And the speed controller will be in the lower hole. And then I will connect the leaders here. And at some point in time, if I need to open the boat, I can disconnect everything and uh, separate the upper from the lower hull. On the, <coughs> on the, the uh, thrower here itself, I will attach this plug. This is actually IP68, so it's not that bad. Um, probably going to use that. And finally we have the thrower. You can now see here there's a propeller adapter. If I loosen this, I can lift it up. So it's got a mechanism here that um, when I tighten uh, the propeller adapter, it will fix itself on the axle of the boat. Or sorry, on the axle of the motor. Here, this is also not flattened anywhere, but that's not a problem because I'm going to fix it with the propeller adapter. And inside I got a real angry brushless motor with more than enough power to empty this uh, thrower very, very quickly. I believe in below a second and it's empty. And then somehow uh, add some additional length to these cables and fix this plug at the other end. And then uh, let's uh, conclude with a look on, on the hull itself. So uh, here are the battery openings. They're quite large. There's an insert here, which I'm going to glue here on the underside. And then use some foam around here. And hopefully it will then sit very good when I then press it on. As an option, I also have some uh, neodym magnets, which I can place here in the front. And I plan then to have the compass here in the back. Uh, it's risky business to use magnets in a boat. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to fix this without the use of magnets. So let's quickly remove this tray battery lids here in front. That's the holes where I can then add the front lights. There's a hole here and here, which is perfect for adding the on off button. So just open the uh, lid and push and start the boat. So nothing really exciting here. Uh, you can see that this was originally designed to attach a deeper. Uh, the previous boat I built actually has a deeper with a, just a hole here 
of 42 millimeters and then I uh, glue then the deeper hair. Putting in the Raymarine transducer. It's going to go, but as you see here, it doesn't quite fit in, it almost fits in. So I need to cut a hole and then I will also get this part around here a little further down so that I'm able to glue the motor on top of it.